I'm Derek Brumell. I'm the Artistic Director of ACO. And uh, ACO, Connecting ACO Community is made possible by a lead gift from Augusta Gross and Leslie Samuels. And thank you so much to Silas Brown, who is our tech guru, advisor, uh, and helper in many ways. And thanks so much to the ACO staff, Lindsay Working, Stephanie Polonio, uh, Jay Jang, and of course, Jay House and our fearless leader, Ed Yim. Uh, today's edition is very special. It features Sharon Nova, and, uh, and she's working on a project with uh, Aya Simone. Um, we have Shara here in the house today. Uh, Aya is going to be with us in the future on this project because uh, um, she just had some, a family issue and had to deal with that. But um, we're so happy that Shara is joining us and, um, and she's going to talk to us about this project, about her comp composition and and her performance, and, uh, and we're gonna hear her uh, sing a kind of preliminary version of this piece, uh, which is called Let a Change Come. Um, to our audience, hi everybody, and uh, I see that people are joining. I want uh, to let you know that you can use the chat button right there at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you may have to touch the screen or click the mouse or do something in order to, uh, to make the chat happen but you can use the chat to connect with others who are watching and you can also use the q a button question and answer which we will come to during the q a session after we hear the premiere and so you can use both of those functions uh the question and answer if you have something in particular that you want to ask shara uh after you hear her perform um and you can hear uh, and you can you can connect with others by using the chat. So uh, so we're going to have a good time. This is our second world premiere in this series, of which there are going to be many. Um, and um, so uh, uh, I, I'm going to ask. I mean, we're going to start off by just talking a little bit to Shara, and I know she's going to be joining us from Detroit with her guitar. And um, hi, everybody that's joining. Everybody from Bowling Green to Washington Heights and other places. I'm looking at the at the panel as I see people joining. It's kind of exciting. Hi from Harlem. Okay, um, so uh, so feel free to just check out those tools that are there at the bottom of your screen, uh, either by clicking your mouse or touching the screen, and that way you can um, you can you can figure out exactly uh, how you can correspond with both the others who are listening and with us here uh, at ACO, and we can answer your questions and pose them to Shara. And um, so uh, behind me, you see the Brooklyn uh, uh, landscape. Uh, I don't know if you recognize this. This is that Staten Island in the distance there. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's actually uh, Italy. <laughs> but this is my fake background. Uh, you, of course, lots of you know about having fun with Zoom. Um, which is what I'm doing here. Okay, so connecting ACO community. We're getting ready to uh, to beam in Shara now from Detroit, Michigan. And uh, are you there, Shara? Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, everybody. How are, how are things in Detroit? Uh, I, I see your, there's lots of people saying hello, Shar. I don't know if you can, you can see, but there's the UK. Hi, Lloyd. Lloyd, Lloyd is here for you. Okay, so, um, um, so tell us a little bit about your process here. You've been working with Aya Simone. How did you get to know her? Um, you know, how, how t tell us a little bit about the, the process of writing a piece with, you know, for somebody else and with somebody else. Yeah, I met Aya at a Kresge Arts um, Award ceremony. Um, she was given a, given a Kresge Arts Fellowship, and I had received one in 2012, I believe. And, um, and Kresge really changed my life in so many ways because of that grant. It was the first time that I had 
time to take off to compose um, because I was, you know, a freelance musician just working on a hustle. And um, so because of that grant, I was able to take three months off and compose my opera, U.S. We All. And um, so I've always felt very loyal to Kresge because of that um, possibility. And so I was going to the award show and there was I uh, playing harp and it was just blown away by her presence. Um, Aya graduated from Cass Tech High School and there's an amazing harp and vocal program in that um, public school that if I'm not mistaken produced um, Dorothy um, Ashby and um, Zena Perkins, who may, many of y'all may know, and um, I believe Alice Coltrane even went there too. So it, the history of this public high school is just amazing. And I had been looking for an excuse to write something for Aya or write something with her or do anything with her. And when ACO reached out and said this was a possibility, I, I just jumped on the chance to write a piece with her. Wonderful. And uh, yeah, Cass Tech, I went to the University of Michigan and Cass Tech was famous for just so many great musicians. There's such a wonderful music program there. And, uh, and so I'm glad to know that that's still going on in Detroit. And um, so uh, Detroit's been pr hit pretty hard uh, in, this, in this period. Uh, uh, with coronavirus and just like New York, I mean, here in Brooklyn, just the, the ambulances have been nonstop. Um, did, you, did you think about this during this, the writing of this piece and how did your interaction go with Aya? What was it like? Well, yes, to speak to Detroit, I mean, we have people, thousands of people here that still don't have their water turned on. So, when we talk about washing our hands, um, you know, it's, uh, it has, you know, people are delivering water. Um, some of the churches here and volunteers have been delivering water to families. So um, we, it impacts this community very, very deeply. Um, and when I and I had our first phone call, you know, I was like, what is on your mind? You know, um, what do we want to address with this song? And change is the theme that she suggested. And just thinking about all these different changes that happen in our lives um, in various kinds of ways that, that there is grief that comes with change and there is possibility. Um, so, so that was kind of our first uh, round of conversations. We just wanted to find our subject matter first. And did you talk on the phone? Obviously, in this, in this moment, you're, you're, you're working remotely. So did you talk on the phone? Did you, did you chat, uh, video chat? Or, and how did you communicate ideas? And how did you absorb her ideas into your, you know, did you play for her? Did you, you know, send sound files? What did she send anything to you? I, I just studied every YouTube that she has ever done. So I, I had her playing at home all the time, just so I could really understand her voice and know what keys felt good to her and, um, just just what styles she liked to play in was very important for me and um so i had studied her quite quite for for many hours and then we called we did a facetime call face to face and or face face to face time <laughs> um and we just spoke and i took notes I just wrote down what she said, phrases and words that popped out. Um, and I was looking at a blank piece of paper and saying, you know, let me just take notes on our conversation. And then 
to be honest, um, it's not a light thing to write music for someone else. And, and I, I take it really, um, it's not the same as just if I were to have written this song for my own voice. Um, when a song is going to live in someone else's body, um, how it feels in their body, how the words feel in their body, it changes. And so honestly, I was so stumped and intimidated to say something wrong or to say something that didn't feel good or didn't, didn't sit right. And so then I delayed and I delayed and I hemmed and I hawed. Um, but I think that all that time I was still processing the information, um, processing through a value system. And so I did two other FaceTimes with her, just kind of, hey, I've thought about this lyric. What do you think about this? When I said, let a change come, I didn't know what that might really mean. And she was like, okay, I like that. Let's, let's work with that. Um, so I kind of sent, I just sang her that idea over the phone. And then, um, then I ended up writing what I'll play for you today and recording that and sending it to her. And then the last part of our process, she then FaceTimed back with me that she's gonna make quite a few changes to what you're about to hear today. And she was like, is this okay if I make that change? And I'm like, yes, make it. Um, because I want it to be hers. Um, so this will be cool that ACO is, is gonna show this work in progress. Yeah, well, you know, I think it was Paul Valerie that said, a poem is never finished, only abandoned. Mm. You know, so, so in a way, the creative process is so mysterious, even for those of us who are participating in it. And, and then, of course, your theme of change works so beautifully for us hearing this piece in many versions, because the piece changes as it goes. Mm -hmm. And even the process, as you said, is a kind of a change. So, uh, so anyway, well, let's, uh, I'll let you get to the virtual green room now. So okay. uh, I know you're going to, you're going to have your, your mic turned off and all that kind of stuff. So why don't we go ahead with that now? And then, um, uh, and then after that, we'll talk a little more, but, but we'll, we'll now hear, um, we're going to let Shara kind of, uh, adjust her microphone and, um, um, and, and what I wanted to say to the audience here right now is that, you know, Shara, one of the things that she did with us at ACO, aside from singing her own songs in Carnegie Hall, was that she actually sang the Kurt Vile Seven Deadly Sins, which is a completely different type of music because for those of you who don't know, she has an opera training. And so she is, she has so many different skills and talents that she brings to her music making. Um, you know, this opera training, her work as a singer, songwriter, and of course as a composer, which you're gonna hear several of uh, in this piece that we're gonna hear. So now we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring Shara back. And uh, I guess I'll give her the thumbs up just to, we're ready now. Okay. And, uh, Uh, to hearing her. Let a change come. This is the world premiere. When I said, let a change come, I didn't know what that might really be to face this empty page to write upon the slate when i said let it change come i didn't know what i would really mean 
not a to see, just a to be, moving toward the certainty of change, 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 Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Shara. Uh, do you need to adjust any settings there? I'm not sure. Or are I you good to go? Yeah, I'm okay. Maybe, okay. Maybe I'll just move the mic so you get reverb. Wow, that was really beautiful. And a lot of people are uh, asking, um, a lot of people are writing in with questions and uh, appreciation for this beautiful piece that you made, actually, which is designed for another performer. Uh, this, this is designed for Aya Simone to perform herself on the harp. 
while she sings. Also, she, like you, is a singer-songwriter, a composer, but also a performer um, and a brilliant performer. And I really think that people should, you know, take the time to go to her website and see what she's doing. And because uh, it's just very beautiful, this combination of the voice and harp, very special, unusual sound. And, um, and like you, somebody who also has a kind of a classical training, uh, along with uh, working in many different styles. And sometimes uh, her music sounds like our me, but also has this classical sound due to the harp. So, um, uh, you know, a, a number of people ask questions. Um, and I have so many different, different things to ask, but people are writing in from England and from Buenos Aires and all over the world. And so I wanted to ask you, what, what is this kind of hybridity that you bring to, to, to your work? Um, do, do you think that there's something else going on in the 21st century, something special with the way all different styles and genres of music are coming together? How do you, do you think about it much or do you just let it flow? I, I used to think about it much more when I felt like I had to make a choice for my career. And so it, it, I did have to think about it in terms of the technique I was using for the voice because opera is a, is a very specialized skill set. And what question was posed to me was, what can you lose yourself doing for hours on end where you lose track of time? And to me, the answer for that was songwriting. And that's really what helped me uh, make a decision kind of about whether I wanted to pursue being an opera singer or not. And thankfully, um, I was living in New York at the time and there were artists like Rebecca Moore and Joan Wasser and uh, Anoni who were all playing with strings. And they, they really exposed me that to the fact that you could do chamber music and write songs. And so that was back in 99, 2000, when I really was going to the clubs and seeing every show of theirs that I could. Um, and and that, that set the course for me. And then I've, through over the years, I've found my way back into classical um, music, but um, I am deeply committed to new work, and that's also another choice that I've made in my life is is to be at my own edge of creation. What is the max capacity that I can do, and let me discover that unfolding edge. What uh, one one of the questions that we got were. Who, who are some of your mentors? What led you on the path toward music? What, what made you make a change in your music making? And, um, and, and then from there, uh, all the different threads that you took, all the different ways that you connected with music over so many years and in so many different genres. Um, curiosity is the first agent for change. And so if I've done something before, okay, I tried this, now let me try something else. I don't want to, to do something. I'm, I'm, you're continually always building on your skill sets, but um, doing new things is the most interesting to me. So um, that's the easy, fun answer. The difficult answer is when art confronts you in such a way that it rocks your socks. And it, 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 um, it becomes a disruption. It is the unstabilizer. It is confrontational. And what I find in, you know, working with Matthew Barney really changed my life. 
I worked on this film, River of Fundament, and I loved working with Matthew and the composer Jonathan Bepler. Absolutely loved it. But they, you know, in that piece, we were, we were moving through Detroit and moving through space with marching bands and choirs. And that's when I became super addicted to marching bands because I realized that we could move 3D. And, but I have to tell you that there was so much about that film that at the time just had me so uncomfortable, kept me up at night. And I'm so grateful for that. It disrupted me. And yeah. so I had to make a choice that I was going to respond to that or I was going to ignore it and I couldn't. Wow. So that transformative power of art has been, has been prompting your decisions as you go and your, your, your interest in your curiosity to continue to explore different um, avenues of your own mind that you may not even realize are there at any given point. Uh, you know, one of your, uh, one of your fans wrote in about your collaborations with Mark Rebo and, um, and people are kind of curious about your, uh, your plans for the future about other projects that you're doing right now that, that might also be exploring um, different, different ways, different kinds of changes, different ways of approaching music. Um, the project that I'm working on for, it, for the last nearly two years is a collaboration with the singer and songwriter, amazing performer Helga Davis. And that is in collaboration with a sculptor, Annika Cupitelli. And we are investigating the very complex issue of race and our friendship. And the piece has been a tremendous mirror, a tremendous mirror that has caused me to go into study. It's required me to read more books and to, to be very honest with myself and, and to be, take a hard look at where I come from and the, the environment that we are born into in this country. So that is gonna be with harp and percussion and choir. So that I think wow. we, will, we premiere that next spring. Oh, wonderful. So everybody's gonna be, we're gonna be looking for that. And you know, we, we just worked, there's so many areas where what you do crosses with uh, what we do at ACO. Helga Davis was just on stage with us at Carnegie Hall, uh, premiering a new work by Du Yun. And of course, you know, m those of us in New York have known Helga for many, many years, as many things. Also, she's somebody who comes to us in many forms as a composer, as a performer, as a radio host, many, many different things, as an actor. So, uh, so everybody's really excited about that. And I see people writing in about it. Um, we don't, you know, people are asking whether, whether you have uh, the lyrics to post for us. And, sure. uh, and, and so people are really curious. I, I don't know that we actually have them on a, on a sheet that we can post for everybody to see, but. Uh, well, but, I have them right here Oh, wow, for you. okay, okay. <laughs> uh, you need to turn it, just turn it. <laughs> Oh, but hold it up. Hold when it up. chord changes. <laughs> yeah, we want to see. <laughs> Yeah. So this is, we're seeing a, a, a manuscript. We're seeing the, uh, the manuscript, right. right? Can you hold it up for us to see in front of the camera? Okay, uh, let me. I think it's, yeah. Right, okay. Um, would you read us the words? Because I, I, I heard the song as having almost like kind of three main parts. You had this first part and you had instrumental. And then you had a second part, which was very different. And, and how do you structure writing a song like that? And how are you thinking about writing for Aya? Uh, and what's gonna be the change as it hits the harp instead of the guitar? 
Well, I definitely wanted her to be able to have space to just really sing without a lot of extravagant uh, playing. And, and yet at the same time, I wanted to create an opportunity for her to showcase her heart playing. So I knew there was gonna be a bridge for sure of some kind that would just allow her time to play. And because I'm not the greatest player in the world, then I just sing over top what I squeak, blue de blue boo boo. Um, but so she, she will play more beautifully in the bridge, to be sure. Um, but I think the thing that was important was that the song evolve, and that even though it have it has obviously these mo this motif, this refrain, that it, that it be different every time. And um, that, that was the most important thing to me is that, that I, didn't, I didn't want to know where the form was gonna go. I wanted it to be moving. Um, do you really want me to read wow. these words? Did I do that? I think people would love to hear the words. Yeah, sure. Okay. When I said, let a change come, I didn't know what that might really mean to face this empty page, to write upon the slate. When I said, let a change come, I didn't know what I would really need, not A to Z, just A to B, moving toward the certainty of change. Change, change, change. When I said let a change come, I didn't know what that might really be, to lose people along the way. And for them, I have no words to say. Change, 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 change. I'll risk to dare to write my script that's wanting more. Erase that line, start over. Here is another chance to let a change come, come, come. Oh, it's so beautiful how you ended with a different word than change, you know. And, and, and it's, uh, it's hopeful, but at the same time, I mean, there's a lot of pathos in there. Uh, uh, I mean, I just, um, I, I feel like change is something that's, also a metaphor for how your life has 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 moved and and we are the beneficiaries of that uh all the in all the ways that you uh, manifest that change and that curiosity um that you outlined for us so thank you so much for sharing this work and we're we're going to be lucky enough to hear it later on uh, as when when aya comes to play and we're thinking about about her and we're thinking about her family uh, and we're thinking about you. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your creativity and the beauty of, of your gifts with us. Um, so many people are sending all kinds of uh, emojis and all kinds of things. So you can take a look at that afterwards. But thank you for oh, the bottom. Thank you all so much. Thanks to everybody for tuning in and, and riding this wild ride of Zoom performances. But I'm so grateful to just be able to have this chance to be together with you all. Thank you for your time and for your support and love. It means it means the world. Thank you. Yes, and thank you. And we're sending love out to Detroit from New York, both besieged communities. So um, much love to you, and um, thank you for joining us so much, Shara. And um, and bye bye. Ah. And we're going to. Uh, we're going to just, uh, I, I just want to end by saying that uh, next week, we're going to be featuring uh, composer Vicente Hanson Atria and Jay Campbell from the Jack Quartet, the cellist of the Jack Quartet, uh, but also a wonderful soloist in his own right. And so for more information about the upcoming schedule for Connecting ACO Community, uh, go to the ACO's website, AmericanComposers.org. And you can watch this episode again through Music of the Rebound, Music on the Rebound, and 
thank you, Shara, and thank you, everybody at ACO, for, uh, and thank you for everybody who tuned in from all over the world to join us. This is exactly what we're hoping for, um, to tap into the creativity of what's happening, even in the face of COVID-19 and everything that's going on in the world. Thank you, everybody, and good night and good health.